Hey guys, and welcome back to this R and Quantitative Finance series. Today, we're going to be going over backtesting our uh, portfolio optimization that we did. Uh, now, uh, this is just going to be a general video on how to use basically a rebalancing function in the portfolio analytics package, which is super powerful and will allow you to visualize how your portfolio did over time, P and L wise. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind of what we did in the last tutorial, um, we, I have this commented out right now, uh, we optimized our simple portfolio. It was just a mean variance optimization, really, really simple. And uh, I can run this once more. And all we get at the end of the day is a set of weights, right? So we have uh, these weights, which the model basically said, okay, these are your optimal weights for your portfolio. Uh, now, historically speaking, uh, we could backtest this and see how we would do, uh, but uh, typically these weights are going to change given the data over time. So what we're really attempting to do here is to do a walk forward optimization. So we would continuously calculate what the optimal uh, weights would be and then try and rebalance to those weights and see how we would have done historically. Um, and we can do that with R fairly easily with the portfolio analytics package. Uh, there's a photo I have that I brought up on Google Images of what we're really trying to do. So before, uh, we just had a historical series of data, right? And we just optimized on that. Now, we're breaking our historical data up into chunks, right? So period one, two, three, four, five in this case, and we are optimizing, uh, I guess you could say there's five inter interval periods where we're calculating the optimal weights and then rebalancing to those weights. Um, so each period is going to be a different uh, subset of the data that we're using. So the optimization period one that you see right here is what we're going to be uh, using for the uh, historical data for the optimization. And the run period one is what we're going to be testing our uh, portfolio on, basically. So this is going to just carry over and over and over. And you can see right here, this is really what we're trying to do here. And when uh, we output some graphs later, it's going to make a heck of a lot more sense. So I'm going to get started with this. And the first thing that I'm also going to note and do is that you can create some more complex constraints and objectives with portfolio analytics. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now because you're not really... Um, Usually when you see people use this package, you're going to be using some more complex constraints. So I'm going to do that. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is relax the box or excuse me, wait some constraints to make it so that we're not getting uh, crazy numbers when we do optimize. Um, so we're going to set a target standard deviation and we're going to set that to uh, let's say 0 0.005. And that's for daily volatility, not annual. That's going to be taken into account in the function. So uh, we have daily data here. So that's what we're going to do now. The next thing that I want to do is just put a transaction cost constraint in there. So this is pretty common too. And in fact, if you're putting this model into practice, this is something to just note. Transaction costs are super, super important, guys. So if you're making an algorithmic trading uh, bot or something like that, or you're doing anything where you have to rebalance or do anything to your portfolio in terms of buying or selling assets, you need to factor in cost to doing so. Um, now, this is a really, really simple way of doing it. And usually it's a lot more complex, but I'm just going to put it in here for the sake of it. So uh, port F and then type equals transaction underscore cost. And I'm going to set that to 0 0.001. Just a really, really general constraint there. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all this and control and enter. Um, I think I have a, yep, a typo right here. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and hit control enter again. Um, and I think I have one more typo here too. Uh, I think it's with the, yeah, it's PCT or PTC, excuse me. So cool. There we go. Um, we no longer need this stuff anymore. So, and again, I'm going to post all this code on the GitHub, on my GitHub page, and you can find that in the link. Uh, now, 
Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do, so we have a bit more complex of a portfolio and I'm going to take that into account and use a different solver for the optimization. I mentioned that before uh, the ROI solver that we used was for simple mean variance optimizations. Now we're going to be using uh, a little bit more complex of a solver and that's the random solver. And I'm really not going to get into how the solvers differentiate on a mathematical level. Uh, I think that's a bit much for this tutorial, but just know that you have a lot at your disposal and the one I'm using random is perfectly suited for this so I'm going to say random portfolios port F and I'm gonna make 10,000 and I'm gonna make in sample so what this is basically going to do is just generate uh, 10,000 random portfolios that we're going to be passing into our optimization function to prevent uh, recalculating these portfolios when the function does it uh, so what that basically means I know that's a lot to kind of take in but when I and I'm going to make this right now. Uh, when I'm going to code this function, or use this function, I should rather say, uh, I'm going to use a function called optimize.portfolio.rebalancing. Okay. Um, and basically what this is going to do is calculate all these portfolios for us. We're just preventing recalculation by doing this. Um, so I'm going to pass in uh, the returns object first. And that's called portfolio returns. And what we also want to do is uh, pass in our portfolio constraints or portfolio object, I should say. So that's port F. There we go. Uh, now we also want an optimize method right here, and that's going to be random. Okay. And we'll pass in our random portfolios. And uh, I guess we can also include the training and rolling window period. So uh, without getting too in-depth into the rest of the arguments for this function, uh, one thing we need to keep in mind is that, remember, back to this picture, we have a training uh, period, essentially, in a test period. And we have to split that somehow in the R function. So what we're going to do is, first off, give our dr function or portfolio analytics function the frequency for which we're going to rebalance. So I'm going to do monthly or months. And now I'm going to use uh, the training period, which is I'll do uh, maybe one month and uh, the rolling window for historical data to be, let's say, 10 months. So I'm going to rebalance basically uh, in this case, it'll be once every 10 months. Uh, and that's really all it is for this. Now, uh, I think that should do it for the rebalancing function. Now, I'm going to try and hit control and enter here. And this is going to take a little bit. So feel free to pause the video here. I'm going to just fast forward it to when it's done to show you guys the output and how we can start visualizing this. Okay, guys, it looks like everything ran smoothly. Uh, and again, this does take a while. Uh, one way you can minimize the amount of execution time that the function takes is by saying uh, search underscore size and then equals. Uh, now, the default, I believe, is 20,000. So you could choose 5,000 in this case. Um, just know that this does take a while and back testing in general does take a bit of time. Uh, so uh, don't be too quick to jump the gun here. So as you can see right here from the output, uh, we have 37 total rebalancing dates uh, with the first one starting on, it looks like January 29th and the last one starting on the 22nd of January of 2019. So we've rebalanced 37 different times in this case. And here's our rebalancing return and standard deviation all annualized. Uh, now, essentially, if you do rebalance correctly, uh, you should be getting a higher return. This isn't always the case, but generally speaking, most fund managers, or even if you have a 401k now, uh, rebalance periodically, and it's really important to do so. Uh, now, we can visualize this output, and we can also create a benchmark as well, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the first thing that we want to end up doing is creating our benchmark. So I'm going to create an equal weight portfolio from what we have. Uh, for returns, and I'm going to 
just use our existing portfolio returns frame to do something really quick. Um, okay, cool. So this should create the equal weight portfolio. Awesome. And I'm going to use the return dot portfolio function in performance analytics to calculate the portfolio return. So I'm going to pass in the returns object and I'm going to type in the weights and that's going to be equal to our weight vector that we created. Um, again, based off our portfolio returns or uh, individual asset returns, I should say. Uh, now I'm going to name it. So when we graph it, or name the data right here, or data frame. So you can see right here in the column name, if we scroll up, uh, if we do plot this, it's just gonna be portfolio.returns. I want it to be a little more specific. So I'm going to say benchmark for what we're changing. And then uh, benchmark portfolio. Cool. So uh, I guess what we can do now is visualize some of the data that we outputted. And you know what I might do? I might put the S&P 500 in there too. Uh, it's a big index for benchmarking in the US stock market. Um, so I'm just going to use the get symbols function. Dot Yahoo. And uh, I'll use the spy. That's the ETF version. And I believe we chose from this date here. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it because it's the same thing. Okay. And I may have a syntax error. It looks like a do. And now it's time to just calculate the returns fairly straightforward. Na dot omit the rate of change of the prices. And one thing we want to make sure is that our returns are in XTS format or extensible time series. Cool. And that should uh, do it for the benchmark data. Now uh, it's time to start visualizing what we have in the rebalanced output. Uh, so we can do a chart dot weights function and then pass in a rebalancing object and we'll assign a title. So rebalanced weights over time. And boom, here we go. So you can see right here, our weights are varying. So this is really what the all the walk forward optimization or back test that we're doing is all about. Um, so you can see right here, the legend came out a little jumble, but uh, what we're doing really is just dynamically changing the weights over time. And you can see this. So for instance, NVIDIA, you can see the weight varies. Uh, well, maybe not NVIDIA. Maybe that's a bad example. Um, Square, for instance, varies pretty heavily over time, pretty volatile, um, or I guess you could say dynamic. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's really uh, one of the main ways we can visualize the weights. And uh, we can create a performance summary as well. And what we can use for this is charts.performance summary. And what we need to do first is combine all of uh, I guess the returns for each individual benchmark in our portfolio. So what I'm going to do is say um, opt or I'll say returns data frame and I'm going to set that equal to the combination of three objects which I'm going to create now and I'll first start with the rebalancing weights and you can use the extract weight function and hold on one sec 
portfolio analytics. Um, so we can pass in opt underscore rebel. And boom, we have our weights. And uh, I think the only other thing we need to do is uh, basically create a returns object with the weights. So rebel returns, and that's going to be equal to return dot portfolio. And then I'm going to pass in the portfolio returns. And then the weights are going to be equal to the rebalanced weights. Cool. And I'm just going to combine all of these together. So rebal underscore returns benchmark. Um, I think that should be it. And then uh, SP 500 returns, combine all of those. And uh, I think we can just pass in the returns data that we just created there. And I'll assign a title of performance over time, or maybe PL would be better. So PL over time. And boom, there we go. So we can see our performance. Um, now, the portfolio dot returns is uh, what we're going to be using for uh, our rebalance return. So in this case, uh, we note that the benchmark portfolio actually performed better than our uh, rebalanced portfolio. And we can see we outperformed the SPY uh, substantially. Uh, now, keep in mind the stocks we chose are fairly high growth stocks, you can see that we're outperforming the market substantially. Um, but typically, we want to see a better return. But this is just to give you an idea of uh, how we can visualize performance uh, with a back test and portfolio optimization. And I think I'm going to end it there. I think it's getting a little lengthy. So I hope this was informative, guys. Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.